Mm. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business on this. Whew. Don't sleep on the Dallas Cowboys Thursday morning. You know, you literally cannot sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because things can happen late in the evening, late at night, first thing in the morning. So you got to be up to speed with everything that is America's team. Whew. Back to life, back to reality today because got to get back on the road and get back to work. You know, they always tell me, don't quit your day job. But it was nice having the time off while it lasted. And I hope everybody had a great Christmas. But it's amazing to me that we are here at week 17. And when you think back to all the things that have happened this year, it's amazing how much has. Remember we started off the year sitting at home watching the Philadelphia Eagles make a run and win their first Super Bowl trophy. And that was like a, a punch to the gut finally lose all of those great jokes that we had about the ringless wonders but dealing with our cowboys and you know when we started free agency and watching other teams that were getting all these great named players and stuff and here it was we were sitting back in fact the jones family was on vacation while everybody else was getting shiny new toys we didn't even get a lump of coal and then finally when we did we went Kmart blue light special shopping there weren't people that you went and got excited about then you had the Des Bryant situation the way it was mishandled and, and being let go and then not having a person to replace him we were dealing with the Dak had regressed and was he the quarterback for this team and still are dealing with that with some of you guys we had the group of guys wide receivers we had the Cam Flemings that were brought in so many question marks there was sean lee could he stay healthy and still hasn't been answered we had tyron smith is his body breaking down is he going to be able to make it through a season or question marks about our draft choices vander esch we drafted a linebacker when we don't have a wide receiver so many things that happened and then those first three games where our offense was putrid i know it's not great now but it was putrid and we were three and five and even troy aikman said it's time to blow it all up and start all over all this has happened this year and when this team was left for dead they turned it around they're six and one over the last seven games it's been amazing how much has just transpired this season. There's still plenty of you out there that aren't happy, don't believe in the team, and are just waiting for it to fail. In fact, I dare say that the Dallas Cowboy fan base is in two different camps that are warring. It's almost like a civil war that's going on inside the Dallas Cowboys. I get called a DAC defender, a DAC apologist, uh, whatever you want to call me. I, I don't care. But I just look around and I say, he's not done yet. That cake is still baking. But I tell you what, it still smells pretty good. I say he needs the right system. He needs the right coaching to be all that he can be but he's got it is which is what I've said he's got it and I told you you cannot quantify it what it is it is a feeling it is a belief it is a I am never dead thing you can't look at it you can't measure it you just have it or you don't and I've said that about it now the person out there on ESPN and ESPN uh, we all know ESPN's narrative is Cowboys suck, Cowboys are an accident waiting to happen, everything negative about the Cowboys. 
except for one lone voice there. And that's Darren Woodson, who's risking maybe his livelihood because he's not towing the company line. And ESPN, by the way, may disappear from Verizon if you hadn't gotten a notice like I did from ESPN, Verizon, and Disney. All of which basically are saying, talk to Verizon or talk to ESPN because they're in the middle of contract negotiations. Disney wants to get more money, even though ratings are declining. And Verizon's like, we're not offering more money because ratings are declining. And if they don't work it out by the 31st, ESPN will disappear off of Verizon. Which Verizon may eventually disappear as well because cable is kind of waning. The fact that you're here watching me talk about the Dallas Cowboys is proof of that. People are going online and streaming. They don't want to pay those absorbent prices on cable TV for 500 channels 490 of them have no relevance to them. It's evolving, but we'll see how that goes. But what is amazing is that Darren Woodson, the lone wolf, out there, he says, and he's been saying, that Dak's got it. Something that I've always said. That the Cowboys should pay the man. And this is where it's going to get ugly. This civil war is going to get ugly. There's going to be some people that are going to say, F Darren Woodson. And here's the article, and I want to make sure that I get it right. Because a lot of you guys will quote me, or allegedly quote me, and change and manipulate what I say to fit your narrative. Cowboys Ring of Honor member Darren Woodson was very forthright on uh, the Russo show when asked should the Cowboys, uh, what the Cowboys should do with Dak Prescott's contract, which is set to expire on 2020. You got to pay the man, Woodson said. I'm not a Dak apologist because I don't think he's accurate enough with the football. I wish he could play four quarters air free football, but you're not going to get that with Dak Prescott. You're not. But what you're going to get is a leader of men, and you're going to get a guy who the Cowboy team firmly believes in. And that's very true. I can't argue with that. I think with coaching, a better coaching situation than Kellen Moore being his quarterback coach, for a, to have a guy who's been there, a guy who can work on the mechanics, a guy who can be an extra set of eyes to understand what's going on, that he'll be better. But he goes on, and this is where it's going to get ugly, and this is where a lot of people are going to turn on Woodson. When he's on the sidelines, they believe in him, Woodson continued. I can't say the same thing about Tony Romo. Romosexuals will be coming out of the woodwork right about now. I can't say that this team... And these players thought, okay, well, Romo's going to bail us out, or we're down by 14. Romo's going to do this. Or we're up by 14. Romo's not going to turn the ball over. No, no, no. They didn't believe. There is something about Dak in that locker room that they rally behind. Think about what he just said again. Let let me say it again. I can't say the same thing about Tony Romo when he was here a few years ago. I can't say that this team and these players thought, okay, well, Romo's going to bail us out, or we're down by 14, Romo's going to do this, or we're up by 14, Romo's not going to turn the ball over. No, no, no. They didn't believe. There's something about Dak in that locker room that they rallied behind. He just said, Tony, oh no. He just said, he chokes. That the people didn't believe that he was the guy to get him there. Woodson wasn't through with his praise of the Rookie of the Year winner 2016. 
and, the, and spoke about expectation for Prescott in the years ahead. He has that it factor about him, and that's the reason why Jerry is going to pay him, which is said. Jerry understands who this guy is. Yeah, he has a lot of warts, but because of his confidence, because of his competitiveness, we're going to be able to cover up those warts, and at some points, he's going to be a championship quarterback. I believe at some point, Dak Prescott will be a championship quarterback because he has the intangibles to do so. Hmm. I want to know how you guys feel about that statement. Because that's what I've been saying all along. I've talked about him having it. And how you, some guys have it and some guys just don't. You can't teach it or anything. But this guy has it. You're talking about a guy who has never had a losing season in his career. Never. Never. You're talking about a guy who, whenever he has got the starting job, never relinquished it because of his play on the field. You're talking about the Dallas Cowboys under him, two out of the three years being in the playoffs. I'm down with him. I believe in him. And I think the Cowboys are lucky to have him. Doesn't mean he don't need to do work. Doesn't mean he doesn't need to do better. But you've got something to work with there. A guy who stays healthy. A guy who gives it his all. A guy who the team believes in. And a guy who wins. And it don't matter if you win by 50. If you win by one. It only goes down as a W. So, I look forward to seeing your comments on this. I look forward to seeing how the blogosphere reacts to him basically calling out Tony Romo. It'll be interesting. Um, we're going to be trying some new things, possibly. Somebody had a great idea um, last night. I did a video with Katie. Katie, our newest Dallas Cowboy fan. Um, a lot of fun to talk football and things with. She's trying to learn as much football, and she's picking it up really, really quick. And we were thinking about doing like a little contest or something like that. Somebody had came through, and I actually pinned the comment up there and said, we should take fan questions and have her pick three or four of them, and we do something like that. And maybe what we'll do, I'm going to order shot glasses again, and maybe uh, whoever we pick out, we'll send you a shot glass and stuff and uh, do it a question and answer or so forth uh, thing. So let me know what you guys think and any ideas of things that you would like to see done on the show. And keep them clean when it comes to Katie, okay? <laughs> this is a PG-rated channel here, guys. But as always, have a great day. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.